Oh man, here we are on the rooftop again, downtown Greensboro, and uh, we are back at it. It is such a phenomenal day. <laughs> I mean, the sunshine, it is incredible. Um, praise God. Look, we are, uh, we're getting ready for another rooftop worship. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you where we're going to be, all right? So uh, if you can see behind me, uh, let's see. We're right there. You see that crest sign? That's the rooftop right there behind me. So that's the rooftop. We're right there on that on that platform. That's where we're going to be on July 9th. July 9th, we're going to enjoy this beautiful skyline in downtown Greensboro as we raise praise to God yet yet again. Yes, July 9th, I'm putting together the um, the event bride and the event page and all that stuff but i'm standing here on top of this roof just amazing i love this view and uh, i want to see i'm going to show you what i'm looking at this is what i'm looking at right now it is beautiful out here so that's crest and uh i'm about to get you to elm street that's elm street right there uh yeah so yeah the beautiful view man I mean, look how far you can see. So uh, I'm praying and believing God we're going to have this kind of sunshine. I mean, it's not too hot right here. I'm believing God is going to feel just like this July 9th. So not this Friday. Next Friday, we're back for rooftop worship again on Crest Terrace. We're going to bring worship to God. And listen, I just want to appeal to anybody that might be wondering about, you know, whether you should come or not. Uh, it's not really as much about the location as it is about the purpose. We really want to give you an opportunity to experience the glory of God. I don't know if you've ever had experiences when nothing else matters except Him, where your your cares, your worries, your your desires, your requests of God, none of that matters, but you just want to know Him. You want to see, you begin to see his heart and feel his heart for you, his love for you. And you, and you no longer have words. You, you just weep at his feet. You weep at the thought of him loving you. You weep at the thought of the cross. You weep at the thought of Jesus Christ pouring out his blood for you. It becomes very personal. It doesn't, it's not, uh, it's not form, it's not fashion, it's not somebody asking you to do it, lift your hands and people telling you what to do. No, it's literally you enter into the most holy place. That is what we are geared for here at Desire. The, the, the tagline is simple, experience the glory of God. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's the joy unspeakable that they write about, that the, the psalmist writes about, about the peace in his presence, the joy in his presence. Listen, I am so passionate about this because I believe you are looking for breakthrough in your life and the breakthrough is in his presence. The breakthrough is in knowing him. It's in knowing him and being in him and with him and seeing him in a vibrant way and experiencing his dwelling place. It's where you have your mind changed and renewed and you begin to think more like him because you see him and you understand his character and you understand his desire for you. He, is, he, he has a desire for you more than you have a desire for him. Jesus Christ on the cross said, I thirst. He wasn't talking about water. He was saying he wants you. Jesus was ready to die. Why? Because to inherit you as a friend, as a brother and a sister, to bring you into the royal family, he had to die. He thirsts for you. <laughs> Man, I could preach that all day because that's what it's all about. Listen, I think a lot of people think it's about getting saved. No, it's about you spending eternity with your heavenly father. It's about you knowing your daddy in heaven. It's about you being in relationship and interchange where he's giving you abundant life and you're giving him your heart. He wants your heart. Why? He made you for that. He made you to be known. He made you to be in experience, experiential relationship with him. And a lot of us, because 
of whatever reason have not had that revelation we have not had that experience we know in our soul that our faith is empty we know in our soul that our faith is dry we know in our soul our faith is not real it's based on what we've been told it's based on what we've been taught it's not based on an experience it's not based on a relationship it's based on what i heard on sunday it's based on what i've been taught since i was a little kid it's my grandmother's faith it's my daddy's faith my mama's faith it's the people on tv's faith but it ain't my faith i believe it because i'm afraid not to i'm afraid to go to hell listen that is not the point of the gospel i'm gonna preach to you right now jesus said i came that you would have life and life to the full fullness of life comes from christ jesus it doesn't come from your career it doesn't come from your your line of thinking it doesn't come from the inheritance you got from mama and daddy when they die it doesn't come from anything from this world you are a pilgrim in the earth your real home is an eternal home the bible says that you have a body from god that is eternal in the heavens this body we have right here is a precursor for the real body we have that is eternal in heaven. He has reserved a place for you in heaven. The Lord Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. What are those? You. You're a dwelling place of God. You're a house of God. You were born to be a dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. You were born to be a dwelling place of the living God. You were born to be a place that contains and experiences the goodness of God in the land of the living as a foretaste of the glory to be revealed in the end. I'm telling you, if you're looking for that God, if you're not looking for the preacher's God, you're looking for your own relationship, you want to come into the presence of God. Listen, why did he make a tabernacle in the wilderness? Because he had to take people who had been enslaved. They didn't know freedom. And he had to give them an opportunity to see him. They had to give him an opportunity to be among them. He wanted to be close to them. He wanted to guide them. He wanted them to experience his blessing. They wanted, he wanted them to experience his character. He wanted them to experience his power. He wanted them to experience his healing. He wanted them to experience his principles. He wanted them to experience his promises. And he did it by bringing himself. Oh, God. If you're looking to experience what you're really on this planet for, you need to experience him. Jehovah God. Oh, Jesus. Hey, I could preach. I don't want to preach. I'm just here to encourage you. Share this information. So many of us are depressed. We're torn up, broke up. We're, to we're just, listen, some of us are tore up from the floor up in the spirit. Our souls are leaking because we don't know how to get into the presence of the most holy God. And it's simple. We cry out to him, Abba, Father, it's me. I need you. I want you. Here I come. I'm seeking you. I'm not seeking the preacher. I'm not seeking the next best help book. I'm not seeking the next hot video on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm seeking a God who loves me. I'm telling you, people need to experience the glory of God. He has put eternity in your heart, says the Lord. It's in your being to thirst for him. And you think the answer's in a degree? You think the answer's in a PhD? You think the answer is in who you marry? No, 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 no. God is at the center of life. He is the center of the universe. He spoke it after thinking it. And his breath covers the earth. His breath is Holy Ghost. And he's moving and encountering people all the time. But we need to know it. We need to perceive it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to be open to him to receive who he is. That's why desire exists. If you're talking about revival, you're on the right track. I'm talking about the Lord. Revival is Jesus Christ. We want to see the world change. Well, that means we need to invite God into the world. And I'm not talking about a planet. I'm talking about people. The Lord wants to inhabit his people. Invite somebody, bring them, and let's go to God together. Come on. Let's go to the altar together. Let's enter into his gates 
with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We'll be thankful unto him and bless his name. And we will encounter God. Bless the Lord. Hey, listen, I just want to encourage you to share this video. I am so unashamed. Click the share button and get somebody in the building. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs to get saved and brought into the Father's house. Somebody needs to get set free from demonic oppression. Somebody's got racing thoughts. Somebody has, somebody's got compulsion in their behavior. They can't help but do things they know are wrong. God wants to set you free from that in his glorious pure presence. Hallelujah. Greensboro, we put you on alert. God is here. His name is Jehovah. His son is Jesus. His spirit is holy. I'm blessed so much today just to share this public service announcement. If you want to see the world change, come to Jesus and come back and come again and don't stop coming. Get refilled all the time. I got to go. I bless God for you. I pray that we see you. I'm excited. July 9th, 7 p.m., we're going to experience the glory of God. Love you much. Bye-bye.